Hey guys, um, so just a couple things about prayer. Um, as we saw with the story of the centurion, centurion comes up and he prays and he speaks to Jesus and says, hey, you know, my servant is not doing so hot. Um, I know you have the power to heal him. And Jesus says, okay, I'll come to your house. That's fine. And the centurion's like, no, 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 you don't need to. You're all powerful. You're God. You could just say the words right now and it's going to be done. And Jesus is so in awe of this amazing faith that the centurion has that he believes that Jesus just has to say the words and the servant will be healed. So he does it. He heals the servant just by talking. Um, and this story kind of shows us a lot of things about prayer. Number one, it shows us how God is in control of everything. Okay. Everything in this world, out of this world, God's in control. He's above. He has his hand over all situations. And the second thing is um, we can ask God for anything. Um, there's usually about two like main things you do during prayer. You either do the like thanks and praise. You either, you know, like praise God, give him thanks for certain things. So that's one. Or you do, it's like the whole request idea. So like you ask God. Um, for forgiveness or, um, you know, for someone to feel better or, you know, you either ask or you thank and praise. Those are the two categories. Um, this centurion um, doesn't necessarily ask for himself. He asks on behalf of his servant, you know, showing us that not only do you lift up your concerns in prayer, but you lift up the concerns of others in prayer. Um, the thing with prayer is God always answers our prayers. Now, that doesn't mean he always says yes, or he always does the thing that we want him to do. He always gives some sort of answers, but the answer might be, okay, but not right now, or maybe later, but not at this part moment. It might be a no. It might be a, I don't think this is going to work. Let's try this. Um... How does why does God answer the things that He does the way He does? Well, He answers them because He is going to do what is best for you in playing the role in His will. So, how can He work what you are doing in your life for the work of His kingdom? That's what He's going to do when He answers your prayers. So I want to share two Bible verses with you. One is from um, Isaiah 65, 24. And this is what God says. He says, before they call, so they being people, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. So he already knows our prayer requests before we we give him, we answer and we tell God. Um, but he wants us to bring them to him and and ask him for things and thank him for things and praise him for things because he's our Lord and God. Um Last but not least, from 1 John 5, 14 through 15, it says, This is the confidence that we have toward him, him being God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the requests that we have asked of him. That's fancy words for saying, hey, if you ask God something, he will answer your requests. Again, might not be what you want him to answer, but he's going to work it for the will of his kingdom. And so when we ask God, know that God is going to answer your request. Might not be how you want it to, but he will always answer you. We can take comfort in the fact that God is control of everything and he's going to do the best thing necessary. So I think a lot of times like you'll pray for something and then you look back like a year later and you're like, wow, he did answer my prayer, but we might not see it in the moment. Um, the next thing we're going to look at is Jesus as the model for how we should pray. So we kind of talked a little bit about this when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, um, praying before his crucifixion. But we're going to kind of look at more examples of Jesus living and how he prays and what that means for us and how we pray.